morning, everyone. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the Senior Digital Marketing Specialist uh, here at EAC. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar. We'll start off today with an introduction of EAC, and then we'll get into how Form Labs has partnered up with companies in the healthcare industry to deliver COVID-19 test swabs. Um, and then we'll also go over ways that you can help if you have your own Form Labs printer. Uh, everyone gets a recording of the session pending any technical difficulties. Uh, there will be a short survey that appears once the webinar is over. Uh, so hang tight once we're done and drop the questions in the queue along the way, and we will answer them after the presentation. I will go ahead and hand things off to Lauren and we'll get started. Perfect, thanks Cassie. Um, Levi, if you wanna to go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so first off, I just want to tell you a little bit about who we are. Um, our mission at EAC is to transform the way that companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. And next slide. Um, but EAC is more than just a reseller. We have experts in more than 22 different areas of product development, with our main three partners being PTC, Form Labs, and ANSYS. And we're located all over the US with our headquarters being in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, although our entire workforce can fortunately work remotely through, through these times right now. Um, next slide. And EAC offers everything that you need for product development. We're partnered with PTC to offer their Creo CAD software and Windchill PLM software, which we also provide training and implementation services for as well. Uh, we also offer engineering and design services if you need help with a backlog. We provide IoT Internet of Things and AR augmented reality solutions to help with the digital transformation and connecting all things in your company. Next slide. And I am the additive manufacturing specialist here at EAC. I've been here for six years now. Um, so I'll be your main point of contact if you need anything Form Labs related, 3D printers, supplies after the webinar, things like that. Um, and if we're not connected on LinkedIn yet, let's connect. I post a lot of content and videos related to Form Labs tips and tricks that you don't want to miss out on. And I'm also here with Levi today. I'll go ahead and let him introduce himself and take it from there. Terrific. Well, hey, Lauren, thank you so much for the introduction there. And, you know, the one place I kind of wanted to start this presentation with is, you know, kind of what EAC represents to us. And uh, you, you can go through all the additive, you know, organizations out there, the range of partners they have. We're very, very keen to find the right partners to Form Labs, right? Because we want people to extend our user experience through their local expertise. And I think that's truly what you guys see with EAC, right? You know, they have the ability, you know, they're, they're problem solvers. You know, you have an application problem you can come to the table with. They're gonna find the holistic right solution for you to obviously fix the problem that you guys have. And so, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure working with EAC so far. Lauren is absolutely fantastic at what she does. And so, you know, I kind of just want to start there. You know, we're very short and very keen to hire the right partners. And uh, EAC has just been a terrific partner so far. And so, uh, just a just a quick introduction on myself. My name is Levi Smith. Uh, I'm I'm going to be uh, running the presentation today along with Lauren. And uh, in terms of just my background, you know, I've been with Form Labs for the last couple of years. You know, I work with the uh, distribution channel over at Form Labs. So, just a quick kind of introduction on what we'll talk about today. You know, the first thing we're just going to do a quick introduction on Form Labs, who we are, where we're coming from. We're going to drive into the uh, the market and trends around additive. We're going to really dive into our print farm, kind of what, what is the special sauce, the, the, the magic formula for how we've been able to build this out. Uh, we'll really dive into how we've been able to repurpose that farm to do test swab production. And then we'll drive into uh, you know, the benefits of modular production, some of the additional medical applications out there. And of course, EAC, the partners champ, um, we'll do a quick kind of recap with them and then obviously answer questions. So I'd say it's going to be very short and sweet today roughly about 30 minutes, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. So the first place I want to kind of start is our mission statement. You know, our goal at Form Labs is to democratize additive manufacturing, SLA technology specifically. You know, we want to expand access to digital fabrication so anyone can make anything. And there's two things we're constantly thinking about over here at Form Labs. The first is how much ease of use can we inject into our printers? And of course, the second is versatility. How versatile can we make these machines based on the applications, the things that you guys want to do? 
And so, you know, the first component in terms of ease of use, the thing I always like to touch on is, you know, roughly 44% of our users have little to no 3D printing experience. So that includes people that have gone from FDM to SLA, people that are just in the subtractive world, moving over to additive, anyone who, you know, essentially a majority of our users have little to no 3D printing experience. And a majority of those are up and printing within about 30 minutes of receiving their machine. So again, always focused on ease of use over here at Formlabs. The second component is versatility. And that really just comes down to material selection. How easy is it to change material? And how many different materials can I print in? And again, we got a great story to tell there. So just want to start with kind of our mission statement. Um, in terms of our journey as an organization, uh, our founder uh, essentially built his first uh, machine in his basement, the first prototype back in 2012. Want to raise a couple couple hundred thousand dollars on Kickstarter, really deliver this technology to as many people as he could. And uh, the second one up on Kickstarter uh, was was a real game changer for us. We really saw kind of what the market looked like. You know, instead of raising a couple hundred thousand dollars, we raised three million, sold 2,000 of these within the first 30 days. And that's when our journey really kind of started. So that was 2012. 2014 was the iteration on the Form 1. Again, a little bit more reliability, uh, great print success. The Form 2 in 2015, this was a real game changer for us in terms of versatility, ease of use. Um, it really took off for us. We got about 40,000 of those Form 2s out in the world in about a four-year period. And then we, we evolved into the uh, Form 3 and the 3L, which again, very exciting technology. We just launched this back in April of uh, 2019. And you know, if we put 40,000 Form 2s out in the world, we've put easily 10 to 15,000 of these Form 3s out in the world in the last year or so. So again, really exciting, built around a specific piece of technology called low force stereolithography. We'll touch on that a bit today. And then of course, in uh, November of 2019, we did launch our Form 3B, which is our biocompatible uh, printer for the healthcare, for the dental space. And again, it's been a really exciting journey. So just a quick recap, um, more than 60,000 printers out in the world, more than 50,000 parts are made uh, with the Formlabs machines. And it's, it's a pretty simple formula in the additive world. It's all based on cost per part. So if you take the journey from 2009 to 2020, it really comes down to cost per part. So 2009, a lot of 3D printing in the polymer space was all built around large frame, very expensive machines. And so it was really limited in terms of the applications it had access to, right? Prototyping and aerospace. And as the cost per part dropped, as these machines became more affordable, as the versatility and the ease of use still stayed at the same level as those large frame machines, you really roll into a lot of the traditional manufacturing uh, applications out there. So, you know, replacement parts, uh, short run plastic parts, you know, uh, in terms of shoes, this is a, we have a great example in terms of what we're doing with New Balance. New Balance is actually printing uh, the soles of their shoes with uh, Formlabs printers. So it's been a really exciting journey. And in additive, this is usually the starting point, which is the way I traditionally make a thing, is it cheaper to do it with additive? That's usually where we start, right? And then from there, it's, you know, we can do a lot of complexity. We're very reliable. You can use it for different applications, but what we're really going to dive into today is, you know, cost per part hasn't really come up that much in the current test swab production um, story that we're going to tell today. It's really about kind of showcasing where additive can fill the gap from traditional manufacturing. So, you know, and what's really kind of come to light over the last couple of months is, you know, the, the global supply chain in, with regards to healthcare supplies is not as strong as we originally anticipated. And so, you know, it's really not a cost per part uh, equation with the swabs that we're producing, is that it fills a need based on the global supply chain disruption. And again, that's what we're really gonna dig into today in terms of what, what are the benefits of modular production. Um, so in terms of what's trending in additive, you know, what was once just a prototyping product development tool is now starting to enter manufacturing and there's two key areas of improvement, right? Compact modular systems, you know, from a system that had to sit in your garage to print to one that can sit on your desktop. And then of course the materials, which usually equates to just brand new applications. And we have a really good story to tell in these two key areas. Um, in terms of where we think digital manufacturing is heading, the analogy we always like to use is computing, right? You know, if you look at computing power in the 1960s, it was all uh, built around large mainframes uh, sitting in a monster warehouse. 
And as the technology evolved, democratized, moved to blade servers, moved to the cloud, we think the thing, that's the analogy we like to use in additive, right? So what used to take a Volkswagen sized machine to print a plastic part can now be done on your desktop. And there's a range of benefits uh, with regards to modular production. So, you know, whether it's redundancy, scalability, flexibility, uh, ease of convenience, uh, these are all things that we'll really dive into in terms of the advantages of modular production. So, you know, the place we like to start is our print farm out of Ohio. So our print farm out of Ohio um, runs roughly 250 form twos, 11 full-time employees, and we're pumping out about 20,000 sample parts a month. And uh, this is not something, we didn't just go to Ohio and say, let's, let's put 250 form twos or form threes or form three Bs in place. We really wanted to use this as our test bed for Agio manufacturing. Most importantly, the unit of production being a desktop printer, our printer to be specific. And so, you know, it has become our test bed for Agile manufacturing techniques. It's something we've built up over the last one and a half years. And it's where all our sample parts are produced. So that little brown box, if you've ever seen us at a show, got a sample part, these are all printed in Ohio. And um, if you go to our website, Again, all our standard samples, I think there's over 27 different samples to choose from. You have all that capability. All that capability is actually printed in the Ohio um, facility. So what we've kind of learned over the last two years as, as it has been our uh, test bed for agile manufacturing is we've been able to create a, a very strong amount of efficiency within that modular uh, print farm. You know, we've been able to reduce labor per part by 60% while increasing uh, production fivefold. So again, it's very agile, it's very modular, and we're able to change over quite easily within this facility. And that's, um, you know, has led us to more high value and more difficult samples to print, but it's also what's allowed us to completely repurpose our, our Formlabs print farm to print COVID-19 test swaps. And about three and a half weeks ago, uh, we we all sat down and said, what, what can we do to respond to what's currently uh, happening right now? Right, and so we went from initial sketch to a design to you know clinical trials to actually having an FDA exempt class one medical device within about a three week period, and we've been able to ramp those 250 uh, form labs printers to about 100,000 test swabs a day. And of course, this is this isn't just form labs specifically. We did partner with some strong partners in the healthcare space, uh, Northwell Health and USF to be specific. These are the groups that we sketched and optimized and prototyped the, the design for the swab. Uh, we also work with them to do validation testing. So all these uh, swabs have gone through the standard leaching, 24-hour, three-day testing. We also partnered with them to really get, the, get clinical testing off the ground and moving quickly. And uh, so far, the results have been fantastic, right? We've, we've been able to uh, test these and obviously um, they perform equally with the standard swabs used in COVID-19 testing. So again, it's been really exciting in terms of our ability to collaborate with these partners. And it really just comes down to the workflow, right? You know, when you have a modular printer, a modular printer that allows you to change over materials to, to, to really showcase the ease of use of Formlabs, the big change that we went through at Formlabs to, to start pr producing 100,000 swabs a day was really just based around the front end of our workflow, right? We changed the material, we changed how we optimized the design, and then it's back over to the printer to start producing those swabs. So the first thing we did obviously is change out the material. We do use our surgical guide, which is a biocompatible resin used to produce class one medical devices, really used in the healthcare space for anything that might have to sit on the skin with regards to maybe a surgical guide, uh, it's also used in implant surgeries for dentists who are obviously doing implant surgery and those surgical guides there. But again, we're able to repurpose that resin for the production of test swabs. You know, the second component, of course, was optimizing that file and preform. So, okay, we got an, you know, we got a design that's going to work. How do we optimize for production? And again, that's what we did in our preform software, which again is our slicing software. Um, it's free of charge. Again, if you guys want to download it, try it out. It's very, you know, it goes along the same lines as, as we have overall, which is how easy can we make that to use? So there's a lot of really easy tools in there, a lot of ability to kind of replicate design across the entirety of the build platform. So we, we were able to optimize and preform, went through the standard post-processing, right? So each, each part that's printed with an SLA process 
does require a wash and a cure for post-processing. That wash is essentially an IPA bath in our form wash, which is what you see on the left there. Um, essentially, it's just an automated uh, washing system that agitates alcohol around the part. And then, of course, the second component is curing those swabs so they're, they're ready to go into the pouch and obviously get sterilized. Um, and then from there, again, we, uh, we autoclave for sterilization. A lot of hospitals are choosing to do this on site right before they uh, actually test patients. Um, but again, they do have to go through a steam autoclave before uh, they're ready to be used on patients. But again, from those four steps, we're able to get to our finished product. And our goal is to obviously continue to ramp past 100,000 swabs a day. But again, our first orders for uh, hospitals have gone out uh, this week. And again, it's been a really exciting kind of pivot in terms of how we can help, how we can respond. It's really all built around modular production being, you know, and, and that unit of production being the Form Labs printer. So going off that point, you know, let's talk a little bit about the advantages of modular production. Um, the first place I always like to start is redundancy. Uh, there's so many different opportunities out there to, to really enhance your capability to be constantly running when you think about uh, a desktop modular fleet of printers versus one large, large frame solution, right? You know, that large frame solution goes down, you lose all your productivity. When those units of production are uh, split amongst the fleet of printers, one of those goes down. It's easily, uh, A, you're not losing a lot in terms of production, but B, it's easy to swap out. And this is usually what we see with our customers who have a production farm is, you know, they'll, they'll have 12, 20, 30 printers in a fleet doing production. They'll have a range of printers on the side that are doing one-off production work or one-off kind of batch printing. One of those printers goes down, they can easily uh, switch that printer in, into, or essentially hot swap that machine um, for redundancy. And again, you know, obviously being able to be geographically distributed, there's a lot of advantages there as well. Uh, the second component, again, a very important component is scalability. So um, obviously when you reduce uh, the amount of production per machine across a fleet, uh, reduces the initial capital investment. Um, it, they're more stackable, requires less space. Um, minimal installation, right? That's a byproduct of what our uh, printers bring to the table, which is a lot of ease of use. And uh, you're able to more uh, accurately get to the exact unit of production that you're looking to get accomplished versus some of the things you see out there with large format, right? You know, with form labs, it's more or less like a step function. Whereas with large format who have more production power, but more contained within singular units, uh, in those situations, it's more like an elevator function, right? I need 1,250 units of production. I got one machine. Now my uh, production is going up to 1,400. I get a second machine, I have a tremendous amount of unutilized production capability. So, you know, the ability to have a justification, be closer to, uh, you know, what you need to meet in terms of units of production, there's a range of benefits when it comes to scalability. And of course, you can scale this up, scale this back. This is really what our partners who are producing with our printers really look at. Um, flexibility, so again, the ability to, to split the printer base amongst multiple operators, different resins, being able to manage those loads a, a little bit more effectively is all contained when you have a modular fleet of printers. Um, and then of course, lean enablement, right? So with form labs, when we think about, you know, producing test swabs, we're not taking 250 form twos, hitting print on all of them all at the same time. What we're usually looking at is what is the amount of time it's gonna take to produce, but most importantly, post-process to get to my finished part. So let's say, for example, uh, the print that I just ran, it's going to take four hours of post-processing or maybe two hours of post-processing, depending on how many swabs we have. That is how you stagger your machine. So for example, you have 20 machines, you have four hours of post-processing to get to your in-use part. What you're going to do is you're going to stagger those machines, right? You're going to run 10 first, give it about four hours, stagger, uh, get the jobs going on the uh, second set of 10. And that way you're constantly running these machines, you're constantly producing. And so obviously allows you to uh, specialize your operators, properly balance uh, cycle time. Uh, you're able to uh, be material specific with machines and you don't have to increase the amount of inventory due to batching. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a range of benefits when you think about a fleet of printers with regards to lean enablement. 
Um, and then, of course, just the ease of convenience, right? So the ability to not only uh, support our, you know, a fleet of printers and a center of excellence, but there's a range of, you know, benefits in terms of distributed manufacturing, right? And this is, you know, what I like about the snapshot on the left is it really kind of showcases how we print at Formlabs internally, right? So our product development team, the people that are building the new versions of our printers, they all prototype the machines with our, uh, our own technology. And a, a really cool story about that, when we, each, each version of our machine that's come out from the Form 1 to the Form 1 Plus, Form 2, Form 3, they were all prototyped on the earlier iteration of that machine. So, you know, the Form 2 was prototyped on the Form 1 Plus, the Form 3 was prototyped on the Form 2. And again, the ability to kind of really distribute uh, a fleet of printers, right? So, you know, our product development team obviously uses them in-house, our R&D team obviously does that, and then of course we have our production floor out of Ohio. So there's a lot of benefits to obviously thinking about a fleet of printers, um, especially when you have a lot of ease of use and a lot of versatility attached to those machines. And again, this, you know, I just want to do a quick recap on, you know, what these machines kind of represent. You know, this is our tool of production. It's our tool of modular, uh, you know, production in Ohio. And uh, again, you know, our goal is to create, you know, very reliable, very accessible 3D printing systems for pro professionals, right? We don't just build the printer, we build the ecosystem around the printer that includes the materials, the preformed software, obviously the automated post-processing. And just a quick kind of dive into what the Form 3 and the Form 3B brings to the table, I just wanna run through a couple of quick bullet points here. The first one, of course, is a tremendously high print success rate. This is all based on our new patented technology called low-force stereolithography. If anyone has any experience with uh, SLA printers or inverted SLA printing, you know, one of the biggest kind of detractors is peel force. And that's what we really kind of uh, were able to resolve quite a bit with low force stereolithography. So if you think about our Form 2 uh, printer, there's a tremendous amount of peel force there. With, with the uh, Form 3 and the Form 3B, print, print uh, excuse me, peel force is decreased by about tenfold, right? So the amount of uh, peeling that occurs, you know, the, the force there is exponentially less, creates uh, much higher resolution parts, and obviously a, a much higher level of print success. That also leads to less support removal, right? So not only is it easier with the uh, touch point size, but you're also able to do a lot less support around that part when you eliminate uh, peel force. So um, easy support removal, which of course equates to less post-processing time, Tremendous amount of versatility. I know we've talked a lot about this today, but you know, at Form Labs, we offer over 27 plus different resins to choose from. And uh, you know, these are all materials we build in-house. So I think of when you think about kind of Form Labs and our R&D structure, again, we're very R&D focused, and there's three groups over at Form Labs. There's the MEs building the new uh, machines that come out into the world. You have our software team that works uh, exclusively on preform and our slicing software. I think the real kind of rock stars at Forum Labs is our material team. Um, what they kind of cook up in that kitchen over there is truly something special. And uh, just just a kind of a quick kind of context on polymer science. It's a very boutique science. So, you know, each one of our engineers, the materials team, 75% of them have their PhD. We got to pluck these people straight out of university. And um, again, what they cook up in that kitchen is something special. We have over 27 plus different resins available from biocompatible to high, you know, to, to very high-end engineering resins. There's a lot of versatility in terms of what you can print with our machine. Um, another added benefit of the Form 3 and the 3B is uh, uptime, right? So we have over 20 plus integrated sensors within this printer. Uh, that includes resin heating, uh, the ability to remote print, even has print failure detection, just to name a few things there. But again, our machines are, are, are more rugged than they've ever been. And it really has to do with just making sure that there's tremendous uptime with these machines. They're never down. And uh, going off that point, the last component I'd like to touch on is a very modular and RMA-proof machine. So, you know, our optics to uh, print is all contained within our LPU or our light processing unit. And in the past, you know, if you had any issues with the optics of the machine, essentially you had to box it up, ship it back to us so we could recalibrate it with a self self-contained LPU, it's now user-friendly, most important, user-replaceable. So 
let's say you have a Form 3 printer, uh, the optics are degrading or it's just not working properly, you don't have to ship that machine back to us. Essentially, we ship out an LPU, and it's about a five-minute changeover to get that machine back up and running. So again, very exciting technology. It took us four years to get it to market, but again, well worth the wait in terms of what it brings to the table. So just want to do a quick kind of background introduction on what the Form 3 and the 3B brings to the table. I also want to touch on some additional medical applications that we, we are obviously uh, validating and exploring. So um, the first one, of course, is these 3D printed adapters that we've built. Uh, they're brain specific to decathlon snorkel, uh, but we are able to work with uh, some of our partners out of Spain to produce these emergency PPE products for mass conversion. So essentially, you know, you can see it right on the screen there, where you're able to prototype and build um, a conversion kit to allow these snorkel masks to work as PPE. The next component, of course, is the ventilator splitter, which you see at the bottom there. Again, this is, should only be used in a, a very serious um, scenario in healthcare. But you know, the ventilator splitter is going to allow one ventilator to turn into two, to turn into three, to turn into to five if you need to. So you know, that's another application we're currently working on. Another one that's under evaluation, which again is really exciting, is a fully validated uh, respirator. And again, we're working with the likes of uh, Northwell to take, uh, you know, essentially a, uh, a regular uh, BiPAP uh, machine and turn it into a ventilator. So we're currently working on that. It's not quite as far along as uh, what we have with the, uh, the test swaps. But again, we're constantly uh, engaging with our partners to find more applications that we can print to help with this lack of healthcare uh, supplies. Some other non-medical applications out there that might be a good fit. Of course, we have the face mask fitter. Um, the ventilated face mask is one that we're, we just got approved last week. Um, the door handle was, was a byproduct of our partnership with Materialize. And of course, we're doing some other very handy, very useful stuff like face mask clips, the tape maker, things along those lines. So EAC does have access to all these STLs. So if you guys have any questions or if you'd like to maybe print these up regionally, absolutely reach out to Lauren. She's going to have the uh, details for you. And uh, I guess with that said, I want to pass it back over to Lauren. Perfect. Cassie, do you see any questions in the queue at all? I don't, but you know what? If you do have questions after seeing this, um, please reach out and send them to us after the webinar, um, and we will get back to you as soon as possible on those. Awesome. And while we're, you know, waiting for any questions to pop in, I just wanted to say again, you know, feel free to reach out to me if you guys want to discuss anything further from today. Um, if you have an idea or a project around COVID-19 and maybe you need some help with that, uh, we do have our own team of engineers in-house that can try to help you out as well. Uh, if you need to order any of the resins that we talked about today, or if you need to get started with 3D printing at all, um, definitely contact me and I can help you out with that. Um, I'm also going to be working closely with my marketing team to help send out the materials that you guys need to learn more about what you guys saw today in the presentation. Great. Did get one question in. Um, Levi, maybe you can answer this. Um, but someone's wondering how they can start uh, 3D printing the swabs. And is it possible to get the file? Yeah, so it, it is possible. Um, there is a uh, rigorous process to, to just make sure that, you know, we're passing to specific facilities. And that really has to do with kind of the IP association associated to this swab. So um, to go from initial sketch to uh, printing and producing, you know, in a three-week process with an FDA clearance was, I mean, anyone that works in the metal, medical device space, it's unheard of. Um, so we had to work closely with our partners to make sure that everything was fully validated, everything went through the right process in terms of trials, things along those lines. Currently, uh, there's, there's two ways we look at printing swaps. There's hospitals that have the ability to produce for internal use, which is absolutely okay. Um, organizations that are not quite, you know, at that, are in the healthcare space or in the healthcare system, you know, we're all also looking at medical device companies that have a specific ISO 13485 uh, certification within their facility. Those are also folks that can um, print swaps. So we do have a, a different set of regulations around making sure people can print these, but 
you know, I'm very open to that conversation. Lauren's definitely the, the initial point of contact there to start those conversations. Great, thank you, Levi. And thank you, Lauren, as well. Um, I really hope everyone enjoyed the webinar, just as Lauren and Levi were mentioning. Uh, we do have those three uh, STL files that we can send to you for the non-approved medical parts. Um, if you are looking to print the test swabs, reach out to us and we'll make sure um, it's an appropriate application. Um, please look forward to the follow-up email after this. Uh, the recording will be or published on our YouTube channel. Uh, that's later today. And I'll be sending everyone the link uh, to the recording along with um, some resources that you can use uh, to 3D print parts right away. Uh, just a reminder too that the survey will appear once we shut down the webinar. So just take a moment to answer those uh, questions. And thank you again, everyone. And have a great rest of your day. Perfect. Thanks, guys.